AMD claims great things for this Ryzen 9 9950X 3D processor. It is apparently the world's best 16 core gaming processor here compared to the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D and also to the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. In addition, it is the perfect processor for elite gamers. And here they're comparing it to the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, a processor that we absolutely adore. In addition, the world's best processor for content creation compared to both the 7950X 3D and the Core Ultra 9 285K. In other words, according to AMD, there's almost nothing this processor can't do. So let's dig into the facts and figures and see what we think of it. The specification of the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is simple to understand. It's a Zen 5 processor with 16 cores and 32 threads and a maximum boost speed of 5.7 GHz. In single core workloads, the processor ran at 5.7 GHz. In multi core workloads, depending on the precise software you're using, you can expect to see 4.8 GHz to 5.1 GHz. The TDP is 170 watts. In practice, the power draw is actually 200 watts. It's the 144 megabytes of cache, which is the key feature of this processor and which distinguishes it from the regular Ryzen 9 9950. X. This is AMD's second gen 3D V cache. With Zen 5 3D processors, the cache is under the chiplet rather than on top as it was previously, and this means the cache doesn't affect thermals or clock speeds in the slightest. The question is how the 3D V cache works in practice, and with Ryzen 9, you have two CCDs to work with. One has 3D V cache, the other does not. With Ryzen 9 9950X 3D, it's all about the chipset drivers. AMD has been working hard on these drivers and the results, as you will discover, are impressive. They gave us a procedure for manually adding software to a whitelist to ensure the 3D vCache would work correctly. In practice, we didn't do anything of the sort. We left it to the chipset drivers to work automatically. To put our Ryzen 9 9950X 3D through its paces, we have some hardware for our test PC. The motherboard is this MSI MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. The SSD is a Crucial T700, that's PCI Express Gen 5. The memory is 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, DDR5 6000. Power supply is a Seasonic Focus GX1000, so it's gold, 1000 watts, ATX 3.1. Our graphics card is this MSI RTX 4090 Ventus 3X. And the CPU cooler, a Fantex Glacier 1 360, and it's a D30, so the fans are 30 mil thick. With the PC running, we can look in the BIOS and we see it looks entirely conventional. We leave everything on auto apart from setting a couple of fan curves and enabling Expo for the DDR5 memory. Then in Windows, we look at a latency heat map and we see the processor looks exactly the same as a regular Ryzen 9. In other words, the 3D vCache has no impact on latency. And we move on to the testing charts. Cinebench 2024 multi-core. Top of the chart, AMD's Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. You can see the regular 9950X is in third place. Cinebench 2024 single core. Top of the chart, it's the Core Ultra 9 285K from Intel. And then tying in second place, we have the Ryzen 9 9950X 9, 3D, Ryzen 9 9950X, 9, and Core i9 14900K. Geekbench 6 Multicore. Top of the chart, it's the Core Ultra 9 285K, drawing 250 watts. In second place, it's the Ryzen 9 9950X 9, 3D, drawing 200 watts. Geekbench 6 Single Core. Top of the chart, it's the Ryzen 9 9950X 9, 3D. Cinebench 2024 Multicore per pound of cost. We're taking the Cinebench 2024 multi-core score here and we're dividing by the cost of the processor. And we're using a figure of £700 including VAT for the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. You can see each of the prices is noted on the graph. Top of the chart in terms of value for money in this test, we have the Core i5, Core i7, Core Ultra 5 and Core Ultra 7. The AMD 3D processor.
processors are way down the bottom. In other words, they don't offer good value for money in terms of pure grunt tests. The Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is third from the bottom. The worst performing in this respect is the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. It's a brilliant gaming processor, but it offers poor value for money. And we move on to CPU power consumption. Intel's Raptor Lake Core i7 and Core i9 draw 253 watts under load. The Ryzen 9 9950X and 9950X 3D each draw 200 watts. In this chart, we take the Cinebench 2024 multi-core score and we divide it by the power draw for the CPU measured in watts. So you can see those figures on the left-hand side. At the top of the chart, we see the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. This processor runs on a mere 145 watts and is amazingly efficient. In third place, we have the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D doing very well. Step down two more places and you'll find the regular Ryzen 9 9950X. Moving on to 7-zip version 24, top of the chart, it's the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. ADA 64 memory bandwidth test is more about the memory than the processor. We have Intel Core Ultra 200S at the top of the chart running DDR5 8200CU DIMMs. Below that we have Intel Raptor Lake running DDR5 6800 and then we have AMD running DDR5 6000. The various Ryzen 9s are all mixed together and there's nothing significant to choose between them. 3D Mark Time Spy is a very strange test. Our hardware, including RTX 4090 graphics, essentially overpowers this synthetic game, and as a result, the processors are all mixed up. At the top of the chart, we have Intel Raptor Lake. Moving down to the middle, we have various AMD models, and the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is towards the bottom of the chart. And then we move on to proper games. Far Cry 6 at 1080p on Ultra Preset. Top of the chart, it's the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. And in second place, the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Far Cry 6 at 1440 on Ultra Preset. It's the same story. Ryzen 7 3D at the top. Ryzen 9 3D in second place. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1080p on Ultra Preset. Top of the chart, it's the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. And then in second place, we have the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. It has to be said, there's a group of processors in second place, basically on level pegging. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1440p. The Ryzen 7 9800X 3D clears off into the distance. And then basically in second equal place, we have the four Zen 5 Ryzen 9s. 9950X 3D, 9900X 3D, 9950X, and 9900X. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p on Ultra High Preset. At the top of the chart, Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Second place, Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1440p. The Ryzen 7 9800X 3D at the top of the chart by a single FPS on average from the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. You will note the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, the Zen 4 part, is only one FPS behind that. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, top of the chart by a long way. Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, second place, it's the Zen 4 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Then in third place, it's the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p, more of the same. At the top, Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, followed by Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, and then the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Final game is Total War Pharaoh at 1080p. In top place, we have the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, closely followed by the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. And if you look at the 1% lows, you could argue the Ryzen 9 actually beats the Ryzen 7. And in Total War Pharaoh at 1440p, it's the same deal. On averages, the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D beats the 9950X 3D. On 1% lows, it's the Ryzen 9 that wins out. And we come to my conclusions about this Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. Pros, the good points. Excellent all-round performance. The gaming performance almost matches the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and it is cool and quiet in operation. 70 Celsius with this 360mm cooler running low and slow is absolutely excellent. Cons, the negative points. The first is that I have to wonder what a full cache chip would be like. We know that AMD has tested out, I call it a 9999X 3D in my head, 
with uh, 3D Vcash on both CCDs. They tell us a single percentage, uh, so less than 10% single digit percentage improvement. Didn't, didn't tell us in what workloads. I would like more data on that. But what I really want is to try that processor. Obviously it would cost more, no argument there. But how much more? If it was 900 pounds or a thousand, uh, it would sit between this part and the Junior Threadripper, and I suspect there'd be a market for that part. But anyway, this part does not exist, or at least we can't get our hands on it. So it's out of reach. And the second con is that it is relatively expensive at £700, including VAT. In other words, if you're on a budget and you want the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, £480. There you go, £200 saving right there. What's not to like? If, on the other hand, it's a mixed workload, then £700. Yes, it's expensive, but I would recommend it. Overall, I'm going for a 9 out of 10 and a must-have. I think this is an absolutely superb processor and it kicks Intel absolutely out of the park. Please don't forget to check us out on TikTok and also head over to kickguru.net to read our reviews.